Hey, Xiwen, it's great to see you. I wanted to present to you a new doctoral student at Northwestern working with me. Her name is Christine Yu, and she just started up at Northwestern in the fall. She did her undergraduate degree in chemistry at USC. She has some amazing research experience working, for example, at Sandia and at other terrific places. And she and I thought it would be incredibly fun to chat with you about your experience through the PhD and the postdoc, and now to becoming a faculty member at the University of Michigan. Thank you so much, Ted, and really nice to uh, meet you again, Christy. I'm really happy and excited about uh, today's uh, chat, and feel free to ask any question you're interested. Great, thanks. So we're probably going to alternate the questions a little bit. I'll take one, then maybe Christine takes one, so we'll kind of go back and forth. So I am really interested just to kind of retrace the your trajectory. And so it seems a natural place to start would be the PhD. And I would love to hear a bit about the work that you're most proud of from the time of your PhD. Thank you, Ted. So the project I'm most proud of is a highly collaborative project with Dr. Zhu Ning and Dr. Ricardo Kalming and Dr. Sasha Vosny. So this work focuses on new material design strategy to unite unique properties of different classes of material into one entity. Specifically, uh, together with Ning and Ricardo, we developed the first epitaxy between colloidal quantum dots and proskite. And in this way, we leveraged the bright near-infrared emission from colloidal quantum dots and the excellent carrier transport in metal highlight proskite. This work is very dear to me because uh, it's not only laid the foundation for my PhD thesis, but also it's heavily involved around the material chemistry and photophysics of the new material. During this process, I get very valuable training from the very best chemist and physicist in our group. And I do think that experience is most valuable during my PhD. And I think that is also a unique feature of Sargent Group. And I think that helps a lot of the PhD student to develop professionally at very quickly. Well, maybe something you were worried about entering a new faculty position for your postdoc? There are several new tasks in a faculty position that normally people wouldn't get trained during their postdoc and, and uh, doctoral study. For example, how to teach a lecture uh, to undergrads. Uh, for example, uh, when I started the position here, I taught uh, thermodynamic for chemical engineering. That is a core course for second year undergrad study, uh, students from chemical engineering department. It was quite challenging in teaching. Uh, however, a lot of support from my colleagues are quite helpful for me, actually. So I have a great opportunity to co-teach with a very experienced colleague. And then he was uh, sitting in the lecture every time and then provide me incredibly helpful feedback. Well, why don't we go on to what you're doing now, you're running your own group, University of Michigan and the Chemie Department. Can you give us a sense of the research that you're most excited about now? Absolutely. So right now we work on skin-like optoelectronics, and this is a very exciting area because conventionally the optoelectronics we have seen, for example, solar cells and display panels, they're rigid, and it's really hard for them to interface with biological system. You may ask, why do we want that? So actually light has a critical role in biomonitoring, and they can serve as a non-invasive probe to tell important biomedical information about us. For example, the smart watches you wear today is actually using light to tell about the heart rate and the oxygen level in the body. So it will open a very broad range of application if we can interface with interface light with biological system. And then we can uh, obtain more information about our body in real time very accurately. However, one big challenge is today, all the optoelectronics are rigid and they're really hard to interface with soft system. So our research trying to develop new material that embody the excellent optical and electronic property, which is needed for a good optoelectronic devices, but also exhibit excellent mechanical property. For example, they can be very soft, such as as soft as jelly or rubber, then they can be easily attached to the skin. So the method we take is to develop new material and understand their mechanical, optical, and electronic property. And the final goal is to develop the next generation of optoelectronics that can be uh, wearable and bio-integrable to deliver 
more advanced uh, technology in healthcare and the biomedical field. I guess my next question would be, if you could like dream up a technology related to this, like maybe, I don't know, 10 to 25 years, like what do you hope will exist in this field? Great question, thank you. There are many applications I could dream about. One would be a brain activity monitoring system using near infrared light emission diode and photo detector. So right now, in order to, to know what's going on inside our brain or which part of our brain is active, there are several uh, methods to probe such activity. And one method that is very uh, non-invasive and at a relatively low cost is using near infrared uh, light, for example, but actually that te technology called uh, functional near infrared spectroscopy. So what that equipment is uh, actually a set of light emission diode and photo detector sitting next to each other. And right now people mount them in a hat and then you wear that hat and then they will record the blood oxygen level consumption rate. And then they can tell you which part is active, which part is not. And that is a very important tool to understand brain disease and also to develop some uh, therapeutic method to treat such di disease. But right now, the device itself is very expensive and it's not very comfortable to wear. It's not portable. Your patient has to go to the doctor and I sit there and I wear that very expensive hat to, to, to understand their brain activity. So I would imagine the future with the development of our wearable optoelectronic technology. I had a question about whether you'd been able to kind of distill some of the things that you liked during your PhD in terms of the supervisory environment, the mentorship environment, maybe other things that you liked and appreciated from your postdoc at Stanford with Professor Jeanne Bao. Are there any of those that you've tried to sort of incorporate into your style of leading your own research group? And do you have any other maybe innovations that you've developed on your own that are very much your own distinct Shi Wen Gong approach to advising the doctoral students? One particular practice that helped me greatly is the learning how to write manuscript from TED. So I remember when I first started, my manuscript draft was, was a bit rough. And TED, he was, you are very patiently uh, editing my manuscript. But more importantly, you helped me learn how to write a manuscript by sitting down with me together and tell me why you made such edit and why there are a better way to express things. So such one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussion is very important for me. And I try to practice um, such a mentoring session with my current PhD and postdoc fellow uh, in my group. Another practice that is greatly helpful in a uh, sergeant group is the apprenticeship is also a great practice in sergeant group. So I remember when I joined the group, I was assigned to two great mentors, actually, Ning and Ricardo, where I can learn material chemistry from Ning and I can learn photophysics from Ricardo for the first few months. You had a great idea, which is to have kind of celebration of all our doctoral and postdoctoral alumni, maybe getting together at a conference, having a scientific symposium, having some social stuff. Tell us more about what you're thinking we could do there and we'll we'll go do it. Great. I feel it will be excellent uh, opportunity to gather all the alumni together, let's say for a one day trip at Boston, where everyone uh, go together and then we can share our recent research and also share the resources and uh, provide insights and uh, maybe also form some meaningful collaboration. I think it's a great idea. Maybe we can bring also some of the new generation of doctoral students from the group and they can have the chance to interact in person with some of our remarkable group alumni. Well, uh, I wanted to send a big thanks to you, Professor Shi Wen Gong, University of Michigan, for getting together with Christine and me today for telling us about your journey. And I wanted to wish you the very best continued success in your group and in your independent career. And Christine, thank you for joining the group. Thank you for being one of the pioneers in our Northwestern team. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christine. And thank you, Ted. Thank you for having me here.